loss. It's something we all go through, but for some reason, it's something we rarely talk about. Today is National Grief Awareness Day, and it's the perfect time to share stories and speak openly about how we can journey down the path of grief, grief without losing hope. Join me, joining me now is uh, CBN's president and CEO, Gordon Robertson, and here to join me in asking questions about this topic is Roberto Torres Cedillo, host of 700 Club. Oi, guys, thank you so much for being with me today. Great to be with you. Thank you. So it's National Grief Awareness Day, and uh, Gordon, the first question I wanted to go to you. Um, we've here at CBN, we've experienced some loss, and you have experienced some personal loss. About a year and a half ago, you lost your mother, and then almost a year to the date, you lost your father, who was obviously the founder of CBN, Operation Blessing, lots of other things. And then most recently, we lost another dear friend, uh, former colleague. I mean, you called him Uncle, Uncle Scott, Scott Ross. Scott Ross. So, I mean, I guess and the, then I lost my father-in-law all, mm, all the same. I mean, it's yeah. been it's been quite a journey. It has. So, first question: How are you doing? <laughs> well, and how I, have you been able to handle that amongst yeah. just life in general? You know, it's it's an interesting question where I don't even want to know how I'm doing. Mm. You know, it's it's one of those where uh, grief comes in waves, mm -hmm. and and you you get to an object or you get to a room or you get to a situation where you're reminded that I'm not going to be able to talk with them. I'm not gonna be able to be with them. And it literally overwhelms you. Uh, you can have these moments, it can be as simple as, I picked up one of my mother's yellow napkins, it was her favorite color, and mm -hmm. um, it was just in a, in a drawer, and all these emotions and all these memories came you know, back, and you know, just, you have to, Take a moment, and in those moments, for me, I found it's better if I feel it mm. than if I don't push it away and say, uh, you know, you know, because those thoughts come to you, you know, mm. well, you know, what's the baseball schedule tonight? Mm -hmm. <laughs> how can, how yeah. can I, how can I think of something that pushes it away yeah. mm -hmm. and yeah. gets me distracted so I don't feel it? Right. And mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've had to learn the hard way. It's, it, it's okay to feel it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and don't stuff that down, but let that let it come and let it come in that moment. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, I think what you said, feeling, it reminded me of Jesus in Matthew 26, where he feels. It says that he uh, he tells his disciples when he's going to Gethsemane, and he's about to face this, you know, the cross, mm -hmm. and he says, "My soul is deeply grieved." Like the Greek can be read as grief, you know, this deep sorrow, this heaviness even to the point of death. And so I wanted to ask you, you know, when you see something like that, Jesus, you know, the Son of God, the Messiah, the one who didn't sin, to have the freedom to say that he feels that, mm. what does that do to you? Like, how does it encourage you that he is willing to say that, go through that, and, and to encourage you in that, in your own process of grief? Well, Jesus feels everything we do. Mm. Uh, whatever you do to the least of these, my brethren, you do it unto me. Mm. So it, it, that's go both, both ways, that's both good and bad. Mm -hmm. uh, so whatever bad things are happening, Jesus felt it and he felt it very tangibly on the cross. Mm -hmm. um, Isaiah 53, that it, you know, it, he, he's taken it all, mm. all our grief yeah. and he's borne it away. Mm -hmm. He took all our sorrow and borne it away. We, we like to think, you know, in terms of healing, that. Mm -hmm took our illness, he took right. all of that. Mm -hmm. um, but part, part of my journey over the past, it's, it's since my mother's stroke, it's been that long, it's been now six years, of you know, what do you do as a son to honor your mother and father in their final days and, and walk them through their illness mm -hmm. and their pain um, and and where do you find hope in that? Yeah. So to, to have our hope in Jesus, that he took all of that yeah. because he loved us, it gives us the pathway forward. We get to take it all and take it one day, one step, mm. one moment at a time, not try to take it all at once, yeah. but right now this moment is, I'm, with him I can do all things, I, I can get through this. Mm. I can't, I shouldn't be pushing it away because Jesus didn't push it away. Wow. Mm -hmm. He took it. Uh, now, was that a decision? Yeah. 
and he walks us through that decision, not my will, but your will be done. Mm. As, as life throws hard things at you, and it will, in this world you will have trouble, yeah. but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Mm. You know, that, that okay, I, I'll be able to walk through this valley of the shadow of death. Mm. I don't have to fear evil yeah. because he's with me. And more importantly, he's gone through it already. Mm. Yeah, wow. So as our shepherd, he's not leading us blindly. Mm -hmm. He's saying, I, I know what to do. Mm -hmm. I know where to go. Mm -hmm. I know the next step you have to take. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just trust me. Yeah. How do you not get overwhelmed with the process of grief? Um, I have a, a, a dear friend, and she tragically lost her husband, and it's been a few years. And I think sometimes we can get overwhelmed with the fact that it's never gonna go away in some aspect. It, I think you just, you grow with your grief. You don't just stuff it down. I mean, as you talked about. And I think sometimes, at least for me too, I've experienced, it's like, oh my gosh, like I get overwhelmed with the fact that this might not go away, this feeling of, of sadness or about a person leaving this world. So how do we find hope and in, in not getting overwhelmed with our own emotions and the process of grief as well? Well, having gone through it, it I'll just say, it's okay to be overwhelmed. Mm. Um, I, I think to try to, try to struggle saying I shouldn't be overwhelmed, um, you're, you're kind of missing the moment. Mm. Um, and it's okay to recognize you're human. Mm. And, yeah. and God knows all about that. <laughs> <laughs> was, was Jesus overwhelmed? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, to the point of death. Mm -hmm. hmm. So if if he did that, okay, I, I can go go through it too. Yeah. A lot of you know what I go back to in these moments is my own near death uh, from cerebral malaria, where I had to surrender. And in my prayer, I had to pray it twice because the first time I could hear, I didn't I didn't really mean it, and it, and it had to be out loud. You know, Lord, if you want to kill me, it's okay. I, did, I didn't have strength to make <laughs> elaborate, you know, Christian <laughs> prayers. It was pretty simple stuff. And, you know, it's real basic. You're at the core, you're at the root. Mm -hmm. Lord, if you, you, if you want to kill me, it's okay. First time I said it, I could hear, well, Gordon, you're, you don't really mean that. Mm -hmm. you, you're, not, you're not all in with this. Mm. Uh, but then with tears streaming down my face, Lord, if you want to kill me, it's okay. And I really meant it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just going back there, just emotionally, I'm, I'm still in that moment. From my innermost being, once I had done that, from my innermost being came up a song, and it's a song I lived, learned in church in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. This is the day the Lord has made it. This is the day. Mm -hmm. And I'm crying, wow. dying in a hospital bed. I wasn't healed in this moment. Mm -hmm. I was still vomiting blood, urinating blood. It was, I was sick, sick to the point where my skin and eyeballs were yellow. Mm -hmm. I was dying. And I'm, I'm singing, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. When you get to that point of surrender, you will find the Holy Spirit comes in and gives you that tremendous, gr mm -hmm. it's a tremendous gift yeah. that you can have joy mm -hmm. in it. And in that surrender, in that moment where you're absolutely humbled mm -hmm. and you, you absolutely know you can't do anything, this is way outside of what you can and can't do. Yeah. But you, you walk into the tremendous power that I can do all things through Christ who mm -hmm. strengthens me. Mm -hmm. It was weeks later that I discovered um, that that yes. little yes. song is, yeah, yeah. is from Psalm 118. Yep. And it's the conclusion of the great Hallel, yeah. which every um, Jewish person since King David has sung at all the high holy days. Jesus would have sung that mm -hmm. at the end of the Last Supper before he went to the Garden of Gethsemane mm -hmm. to say, not my will, but your will be done. Mm -hmm. 
And this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. You'll find it in Psalm 118. So if you're going through grief, if you're going through suffering, go back and read that psalm. Jesus is actually singing that to the Lord as he is getting ready to go to the Garden of Gethsemane, as he's getting ready to go to the cross. Mm. Wow. So what, what does that do for us as believers to enter into and, and to enter into this mysterious verse that Paul has, we have fellowship in his suffering. And, and you don't learn anything about yourself or Jesus until you come to that point where it's not all, you know, joy and, you know, I'm, you know the sort of the typical testimony, I was this horrible, <laughs> wretched person, and then I found Jesus, and now everything, yeah, I'm living happily ever after. Mm -hmm. You know, in this world, you will have trouble, and in that trouble, when you have fellowship with him and his suffering, yeah. You, that's when you come to that victory. That's when you come to the resurrection. Because without wow. that death of self, uh, you, you don't get it. Sorry, I'm getting teary. Yeah. <laughs> Super it's powerful. powerful. Yeah. Roberto, do you mind asking one more question? Yeah. I feel like we should. Yeah. How can we help those who are mourning? I'm reminded of Jesus when he said, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. I feel like, for example, you know, as, you, as we hear you talk, we want to help. We want mm -hmm. to be respectful and encouraging, and there's other people that are watching that are going through grief, how can we help them in their process of mourning and grief? Yeah. Some practical ways. I think the number one thing practically to do is please don't preach at them. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, when, when, you're in, when, you, when you're in overwhelming loss, you don't want to hear about, well, you could do this better, or you should have done this, or, you know, it's just not a place for it. I think one of the best things you can do with somebody mourning is just sit with them. Yeah. You know, I'm here for you. I don't have any words for this. Yeah. You know, we, we can talk about shared suffering. We can, you can talk about your experience with suffering, but sometimes that comes across as preachy. Mm. Um, and uh, trust me on this one, they're, they're not looking for that. Mm -hmm. um, what, they're, what they're looking for is comfort. And, and something as simple as a hug or a touch, um, you know, I'm, I, I, I want to share your suffering. I, I don't want to push it away. Right. I, I want to be there for you mm -hmm. in your time of need. I want to mourn with those who mourn. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.